Please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Good morning. Welcome to Bazaar Morning Call. I'm Lata and with me is only Sonia. We are missing Anuj today. Uh, but we could have a packed day. Actually, uh, although we had an excellent day yesterday or at long last a good day for the bulls, uh, the morning uh, cues from Asia look a little jittery. For one thing, we are just 24 hours away from that big July 6 deadline when $34 billion more of goods will come under tariffs. Both US and China mutually are going to uh, impose tariffs on each other's goods. So Asia is extremely somber as the July 6 deadline uh, approaches. Uh, what about our own rally yesterday? Well, we did see some of the strong stocks like autos and banks, uh, and banks like Innocent, HDFC, taking charge of the rally. But uh, these could have some bit of a speculative uh, uh, base. One, because there, were, there was talk uh, towards the second half of the day that some of the stocks are coming out of ASM. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the, the uh, SEBI's uh, uh, additional surveillance mechanism. So that pushed perhaps all the graphite stocks and uh, uh, you know, some of the uh, ASM variety of stocks uh, <coughs> uh, a little up. But they were largely the mid-cap varieties. As also U.S. isn't trading, U U.S. didn't trade yeah. yesterday, that gave a bit of a leg up to the bulls. If you looked at the delivery-based uh, buying, then it was only in Maruti and TCS and HDFC that you saw solid delivery-based buying. Rest of the stocks were, you know, largely uh, 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 paltry numbers. And therefore, we will have to see whether yesterday's rally tests today, stays the ground today. And secondly, of course, uh, we will have to all watch out for Reliance. Uh, the AGM could have things which, uh, you know, even if that big boy moves, it can move the market. Oh, absolutely. In fact, a lot of stocks, right, to watch out for today, not just Reliance, there's Future Lifestyles after they bought that stake in Coves, there's Titan with that quarterly Coves, there's Titan with that quarterly update. So we'll talk about all that. Uh, yesterday, of course, the Bank Nifty rallied, but also what happened is a lot of the uh, blue chip names took center stage. So whether it was Reliance, HUL, there was, um, you know, HDFC was one of the big gainers yesterday. So all in all, it turned out to be a good day. But give and take everything, this market is still within that trading range that, you know, our... Uh, uh, experts have spoken about 10,550 on the downside and 10,800 on the upside. So for now, there doesn't seem to be any trigger that can take this uh, market above that range. But we are inching towards the higher end. So let's see how that shapes up. Uh, Lata, on the uh, MSP uh, that you know was announced yesterday, of course, it's one thing to announce the MSP and it's another thing for the market prices to actually go up. So from an economy standpoint, uh, do you see it have a big impact on inflation? Well, at least a 50 basis point impact is what uh, the market are uh, uh, factoring in most of the economists there was one economist who went higher and said it could even be a 70 basis point hike so much will depend on uh, to what extent it's uh, implemented and the manner in which it's implemented but uh, the important point is yesterday the bond markets did not move up mm -hmm. actually they fell by a few basis points so chances are this was largely factored in and that is why uh, you know there was no f need to uh, you know, push up the bond yields further because of this uh, announcement. So we just, I'm just taking the bond market verdict mm -hmm. that because the yields didn't move up, maybe there isn't anything, uh, you know, worse to come today. Okay, you know, th that's right. In fact, a lot of uh, experts like CLSA believe that, I mean, this was announced in the month of February, so it's not come as a shocker, but they are now pricing in the possibility of an RBI uh, rate hike as well uh, in the next that meeting. That also is in the price, actually. Yeah. The Reserve Bank, the way in which the 10-year yields are at uh, 7.89, uh, 7.85 to 7.95, they've actually priced in three rate hikes. And therefore, you could argue, see, yesterday it's three basis points down. You could argue that uh, it's been discounted and maybe today no fresh reverses because of that. And of course, yesterday's rally could have also been because some of the rural-based stocks. Yeah. Uh, you Ooh. know, for instance, Bajaj Auto. Bajaj Auto was the leader of the pack. Right. You saw a lot of the rural-facing stocks getting a leg up. MSP was an additional reason. Oh, absolutely. You know, when, when I did speak to Rajesh Jajurikar, you'll hear that conversation mm. out. He mentioned that generally after two good years of uh, um, tractor growth, comes a couple of bad years, but this time things will be different because the MSP hike has also come through. So uh, farm income will definitely pick up. But we'll talk about all of that in greater detail through the course of the show. For now, let's tell you what our wise experts have to say as we head into trade this morning. Mahesh Nandurkar of CLSA uh, says the government has announced large increases of 4 to 5% in uh, minimum support prices for summer crops. 
he says uh, the in principle announcement was made in February so this is not a big surprise but it certainly increases the prospects of a rate hike at the upcoming RBI policy meet he also says while details on implementation of the MSP hike are awaited the government intentions are clearly supportive of rural incomes he says their favorite rural place continue to be M&M ITC Darbar Imami and Crompton consumer he also says the rural largest will however adversely impact the fiscal deficit and inflation raising macro concerns and an adverse movement in terms of trade is also likely okay the adverse movement in terms of trade is what uh, perhaps will make a big difference but uh, we will have economists later on in the show discussing these issues with us uh, let's get you more opinion on similar issues uh, sanjay mukim of bank of america merrill lynch says two incremental effects of the msp hike are that rural farm incomes will remain supported and fiscal pressures will increase he likes the rural theme and is overweight auto and cement says macro has peaked micro is improving but runs into very high expectations cautious on indian equities and this december sensex target well that's a disappointment it's 32000 disappointment for the bulls of course okay let's also get you some money market views and tell you how to approach that space this morning mohan shinoy of kotak mahindra bank says The dollar index has stabilized around 9450 as China aims to maintain a stable yuan and crude oil prices settle in a higher range of 75 to 80 dollars a barrel. He says the rupee traded positive against the dollar due to selling from exporters and RBI intervention. He expects the dollar INR pair to trade in a range of 6860 to 6890 for the trading day. Uh, this is Mohan Shenoy on rupee he says a uh, uh, sharp sorry in bond bonds he says a sharp hike in the minimum support prices is expected to create inflationary pressures necessitating a response from the monetary policy committee in the next policy review says gilts did not react to msp announcement as it was already priced in by the market expects the 10 year benchmark bond yield to trade in a range of 7.84 to 7.88 for the day All right uh, well that's what happened in our own markets but of course uh, it was the 4th of July celebrations across the US markets were shut what else happened across the world mangalam tells us more mangalam Well, while the U.S. markets were shut on account of Independence Day yesterday, that doesn't mean there were any dearth of cues coming in from the globe. The first one coming in for our markets was definitely from the crude oil space. Donald Trump tweeted and uh, urged OPEC, uh, OPEC to reduce pricing now, and they say that the OPEC monopoly must remember that ga gas prices are up, and they're doing little. to help with that he said reduce pricing now what did that do for crude prices well they briefly fell below the 78 dollars per barrel mark but remember this still higher from earlier levels of close to 73 74 so we will watch out for how that pans out as far as europe and asia are concerned they are under pressure as the deadline for the sino us trade tariff uh, approaches so the european markets the front line indices were marginally in the red the only green that we saw in the periphery was in the spanish index which was up about 1% and the brazilian index in the emerging market space which was up about a percent and a half remember july 6th is the day where the chinese tariffs on us goods will take effect ahead of that the asian markets more or less in the red as we speak the shanghai too has reversed after opening in the green the sgx nifty however indicates an absolutely flat start as we speak okay we will take that with both hands won't we uh, mangalam thank you very much for that trap sgx uh, nifty at the moment uh, uh, meeting an even keel between the jitters in asia and yesterday's bullishness in india uh, but before we uh, go into a break uh, yesterday cnbc tv 18 was partner to the sbi conclave their annual economic conclave and there an interesting discussion cropped up on mutual funds uh, mutual funds of course have been gathering momentum in the last few years and their assets under management now account for about 23 lakh crore which is 1/5 of bank deposits and that's a large size this size should invite tighter regulations i caught up with mr g mahalingam the whole time member of sebi who was at the conclave and he tells me that regulations in india are tight enough listen the mutual fund industry has been growing at a scorching pace i think it was 5.87 lakh crore somewhere around march of 2012 and the latest figure is 22.60 lakh crores it has grown by almost about four and a half times in a matter of just about 5 years uh correspondingly the folios have also gone up but the relevant question here is i think as lata very rightly put it number 
are, is this industry very tightly regulated, as regulated as the banking industry? I would come back to it maybe a little later, but then clearly, if you look at the regulatory domain of the mutual funds today, India is perhaps having a tighter regulation than the other comparable international jurisdictions as far as the mutual fund industry is concerned. You have a net worth requirement, the net worth requirement is about 50 crores per mutual fund. Now people ask the question, it's a mere pass-through vehicle, do you need a capital requirement at all? Now to this the answer is, while, well, pass-through vehicle does not mean that you don't need any capital at all. You could incur some losses by way of something which had to be compensated by the AMCs, number one. Number two, the AMC themselves have to really infuse confidence amongst the investor public, look, I am worth this much of capital. That is number one. Number two, when you talk about the regulation from the exposures perspective, I think the kind of exposure guidelines that SEBI has now given as far as the mutual funds is concerned, they are pretty, pretty conservative. So, I mean, the uh, mutual fund really cannot go completely overboard at all. So, to that extent, I would say that the regulation in the mutual fund industry is pretty, pretty good. It's very robust. But then, I have to really qualify the statement saying that today the markets are good, everything is running fine. So then nothing has happened as far as the mutual fund industry is concerned. Tomorrow if the markets are on a slippery slope, they come down and if the mutual funds start showing some negative returns and we see some mis-selling investor complaints and all, perhaps we may have to again retweak the regulation there. Okay, that's important. G. Mahalingam also spoke about whether the circulatory flow of funds between NBFCs, mutual funds and banks was risky. That's been the big fear in the market as well. Listen in to what he had to say. I think there is a good amount of circulation, uh, circulatory, uh, uh, a kind of interconnectedness between the banking industry and the mutual fund industry today, mutual fund industry and the NBFCs today. The NBFCs issue a CP and the mutual funds go and subscribe to that CP. And similarly, the NBFCs themselves come and invest in the mutual funds. Same thing is happening as far as the corporates are concerned. Same thing is happening as far as the banks are concerned. But the banks are capped to some extent. So clearly what is happening is this interconnectedness, if it is going to happen in such a way that one particular industry is suffering, it could actually drag the other industry simply because of interconnectedness. Only thing is this needs a little more of a regulatory study. I would say that the regulators are actually clued on to it, they are analyzing it. At the time of FSDC meetings and all, this is being very closely monitored. It has not reached a stage where it is causing a regulatory concern, but we have to be on the alert. I think that's very important uh, uh, what uh, the whole time member of SEBI is saying that uh, FSDC has been watching the flow of funds from NBFCs to MFs to banks, uh, uh, the circulation. And th the other concern which I asked him is uh, how about mutual funds and their ability to face redemption pressures should the market take a sudden slide uh, and could that prompt a liquidity concern? Uh, I think on this gr uh, point, uh, Mr. Mahalingam was somewhat confident. As far as the Indian mutual funds are concerned, when you talk about uh, the redemption pressures, number one, as per the regulation, if I am going to redeem, I send a redemption notice to my mutual fund, the mutual fund gets 10 days notice to redeem. So there is a good amount of time, there is a breather time available. Although the mutual funds today do the redemption within a matter of about three to four days, the regulatory time available is about 10 days. Second, there cannot be a run of the mutual fund simply because the instant redemption facility which is afforded today, that is only a very limited, narrow window, which is not going to really cause a huge amount of liquidity pressure on the mutual funds, number two. Number three, there is no prescription from the regulator SEBI to the mutual funds akin to SLR or akin to CRR. But at the same time, the mutual funds have their own internal prescriptions of how much to invest in the liquid instruments, money market instruments, so that they don't really run short of liquidity. A fourth point is, after all, the mutual funds, while they cannot create a leverage, they are entitled to go to a funding line from the bank to at least meet the redemption pressures to a limited extent. I would again come back to the other points later, but I would, it would suffice to say, today the mutual fund industry is not going through a liquidity crisis at all. And even in 2013, when Reserve Bank created a window of 25,000 crores, that 25,000 crores window remained completely unutilized. I think that's very important. Even in 2013, 
uh, RBI allowed mutual funds to borrow from RBI uh, from banks uh, in case there was a redemption pressure, but uh, they didn't use that window. Mm. So he's very confident that in a uh, in the case of a huge redemption, probably because of a market slide, even then the mutual fund industry so far. Uh, has not uh, sought the help of banks. And finally, this is something that we should take on board. Uh, he, uh, Mr. Mahalingam also wondered if the situation had come when mutual fund, one or two mutual funds have become so big that uh, we should look at them as systemically important companies. Now, systemically important companies world over attract larger capital requirements. So listen to what he had to say on this issue as well. Even though like we may treat some of these capital market entities as fast through vehicles. I think they are, as I mentioned before, they have a tremendous amount of interconnectedness with banks, NBFCs and other entities in the system. So perhaps I think size is going to be a very, very important role that is going to play as I think Subbu also said, tomorrow if there is a problem, the problem is going to get reverberated across. So perhaps we need to consider that. Now only thing here is, what do we do? Let's assume we identify some mutual fund as systemically important. Then perhaps we have to think in terms of proportionate regulation. So are the regulatory barriers going to be set higher for such institutions? This is something which we need to really think about. Okay, that's the CNBC TV18 exclusive. We'll take a short break on that note, but there are plenty of stocks to look forward to as we head into trade today. So don't go anywhere. Our top 10 list of stocks when we return. Bazaar morning call. I assure you this morning there are plenty of stocks to look at. Of course, it's the Reliance Industries 41st AGM as well. But apart from that, so many stocks will react immediately in trade today. But talking about the AGM, uh, Kritika, our colleague, is at location to tell us what to expect from the AGM this time around. Uh, Kritika, hi. Good morning. Uh, what should the street or investors, stakeholders expect from the AGM? Morning, Sonia. So, you know, three things to watch for. It's always largely about last three years, at least it has been about a big geo announcement. So, the big geo announcement is likely to be the FTTH, which is the fiber to home. That is essentially the wireline broadband services announcement. So, geo fiber services uh, is officially likely to be launched in terms of timeline, commercial dates, prices. We are expecting the detail. It's likely to be, be between 1,000 to 1,500 rupees per month. So, anything above that is going to be a bit of a disappointment. Uh, we are expecting some clarity with respect to uh, the exact subscriber base that Geo has. So they are expecting to cross about 200 million. I don't know if you can see uh, the logo etc. behind me, but there's a lot of excitement about uh, uh, Mukesh Ambani's uh, tenure likely to be extended by five years. Essentially, the shareholder nod is uh, uh, expected today. And again, 20,000 crore of NCD as per protocol is going to be cleared. Any kind of commentary with respect to the consumer business, because in the shareholder annual report, uh, Mukesh Ambani had pointed out the consumer is going to be as big as energy and material in the next decade or perhaps even faster than that. So we are expecting some clarity on these key areas. Okay. Well, we can't see any logo. We can only see a big umbrella. But uh, Kritika, thank you very much. Uh, braving <laughs> the rain and standing there from 8 a.m. for an AGM that starts at 11 a.m. There she is to give us uh, the ground report. Uh, well, uh, uh, you know, if, if this uh, fiber to home is really launched, I don't know whether today how Reliance will react, whether there will be any announcement on an IPO. Mm -hmm. All these could be, of course, market moving and the bar uh, stock could start on the front foot, yeah. anticipating some positive announcements. But actually, uh, it's more likely that Idea and uh, uh, Bharti would be on the back foot if, uh, you know, a big bonanza in terms of uh, uh, the nature of the offer is announced. And we had covered it. Remember that 200 million uh, subscribers that Reliance was, uh, Relgio was getting to? Yeah. So I guess that's the announcement mm -hmm. that they would make uh, today as well. Something that the street has perhaps already priced in with the kind of move that we've seen in the Reliance industry stock. stock. But uh, standard disclaimer, of course, the uh, owner of the channel that you're watching. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Titan because there was a quarterly update that the company put out yesterday. Uh, Mangalam, anything different from what we know already? Uh, well, not really, uh, Sonia, apart from the fact that the company went ahead and said what the street was factoring in already. So the company said their jewellery growth in F Q1 FY19 was slightly muted on account of two reasons. One, the demand scenario was weak. Uh, this is in the adornment segment, not the Akshay Tritya sales. And the second thing was there was a high base because of which optically the first quarter numbers would look weak. Remember, first quarter FY18, the previous year, that is saw 54% growth in the jewellery segment on account of a one-off and preponement of sales because the next 
quarter was GST. So on that regard, the company saw, said that the first quarter jewellery business looks muted. They haven't changed their guidance. In fact, they've gone and opened 10 new Tanish stores in this quarter itself. Uh, now the stock, had it been at a record high, maybe the street would have taken it, uh, uh, taken it uh, in a bit of a negative muted reaction. But the stock is down 11% from record highs. So maybe the lows may be bought in today's session. Oh, yes. Uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, clearly, it saw a bounce up as it reached uh, the 200 moving average, and it hasn't since looked back. Uh, so perhaps uh, this news will be greeted positively. Okay, uh, the big stock that we will once again watch out for today would be Sriram Transport. Yesterday, we had the management uh, acknowledging that 870 crore uh, NCD exposure or corporate guarantee to uh, its uh, subsidiary SBL. Thereafter, after our conversation, it put out a press release. Uh, Abhishek is here to tell us the developments after that chat. Abhishek. Well, Lata, Shiram Transport has confirmed our story that we broke yesterday that the promoter group has enough resources to honor the NCD payments as and when it arises. So, therefore, there will be no financial implication for Shiram Transport Finance Company alone. Uh, it will be from the promoter group that the payment will be done. Now, look at the trade volume data. The delivery data suggests that there was a total traded quantity of close to 1.84 crore shares and out of which 21% was marked for delivery. Typically, this is a low delivery counter, so therefore 21% is on the higher side. You look at the FNO data, you know, 55.7% open interest with the stock down 12% suggests that there were fresh shots going into trade yesterday. Brokerages have remained uh, uh, bullish on the stock with uh, Deutsche Bank maintaining their uh, buy call target price at 1700. ICSI Securities has upgraded to buy from ad. Back to you. Okay, thanks a lot for that, uh, uh, Abhishek. Uh, important that uh, at the lows, some people exp are calling a buy on the stock. And more importantly, if the promoter group steps in, then I think uh, that changes uh, the EPS forecast as well for Sriram Transport. But uh, two other big auto stocks in focus. Sonia, first, Tata Motors. Well, for Tata Motors, I expect the stock to be in the red today. That's because the retail sales for the month of June in the US have slowed down. You know, not just for Tata Motors, the entire luxury market has slowed down. BMW, Audi, Mercedes fell 10%. But JLR uh, actually grew just about 7 odd percent coming in at 9,500 units. The retail sales were lower than Nomura's estimates. Jaguars, I mean, it seems like nobody is buying Jaguars anymore. The sales actually fell 20 percent on a year on year basis. And as I said, the luxury auto market in the US has fallen. It's grown just 5 percent in June. And these are the statistics of the big boys. BMW saw just a 2 percent growth. Audi sales were absolutely flat in the month of June. And Mercedes was actually down 10 odd percent. Uh, seems like spending power has perhaps come down but on the other hand force motors um looked very good. I expect the stock to be in the green. Uh, total sales growth of 8.5% year-on-year, sales growth of 17% on a month-on-month -month basis and third consecutive month now that Force Motors has been seeing an improvement in sales. So this stock could perhaps be in the green. Yeah, a little of a dissonance because we thought uh, US ISM manufacturing was doing very well. Yeah. Normally when manufacturing does well, you expect consumption also should have been high. So this uh, Jaguar and more important Mercedes sales and luxury car sales fall comes as a bit of a shock. No, I'm glad you brought that out. We'll talk about that with Bharat Forge because truck sales have done very well in North right. America. It's, I think, luxury car makers that are suffering. Okay. Well, uh, anyway, it's a US problem. Uh, uh, it <laughs> only impacts Star Motors as far as we are concerned. Ekta, to you, Biocon reported uh, some nod from drug regulators. Yes, absolutely. Well, uh, it is for their biosimilar facility in Bangalore, which has received the go-ahead from the European regulator. It was inspected by the European regulator in the month of March, had received six observations, none critical at that point in time. And now they've got the go-ahead for that uh, facility. So maybe we could see some approvals for the biosimilars uh, to come through from Europe on account of this positive news coming in. Thanks a lot for that. Positive news for Biocon and positive news for Bharat Forge as well. As I said, the North America truck sales in the month of June have been quite good. They came during market hours yesterday, but a lot of brokerages have written their notes. Nomura says that the Class A truck sales went up by 143% and the order inflows now remain above 40,000 units per month 
for the third, uh, fourth time in the last six months. So the trend is looking very good. They have a neutral call on Bharat Forge, but their target price is much higher. Uh, they have a target price of 736. So perhaps the stock could uh, see an up move. But that uh, big MSP uh, hike was, uh, you know, was announced yesterday. What have brokerages made of it? And Nimesh will tell us. Nimesh. Well, sir, you know, most of the brokerages have re-retreated their positive stance on the rural place. In fact, since the beginning of the year, most of the brokerages have been bullish on the on the rural place. So CLSA maintains its favorite uh, you know, rural place, the likes of MNM, ITC, Dabar, Imami, Compton Grief. So these are the favorite uh, place for CLSA. Even Macquarie has a couple of uh, you know the rural places, the likes of Titan and uh, and Maruti as as the top bet. So even Macquarie is bullish on the rural play. Uh, 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 Bank of America, Merrill Lynch has put out a note today morning saying they continue to like the rural theme. That that's the one of the big uh, big bets. Uh, they like the autos within autos. They like the two wheeler space and the cement companies. So. Net net, uh, mo most of the brokerages are of the view that the rural theme is going to continue because of the uh, pricing power going up for, for farmers, and that's going to be very positive for the, all the rural players, whether it's Maruti, whether it's Triton, Crompton Greaves, or Dabur, or Imami. Okay, that's a very important. Uh, although we did see a bit of a leg up even yesterday because the MSP numbers came in. Uh, it's important that so many brokerages have given a thumbs up to rural-based consumption stocks. Uh, but consumption stocks, uh, Mangalam, Future Lifestyle, the big uh, uh, buyout. The big uh, acquisition, Lata. Yes. You know, the beauty of retail, when you and I go to Coops, we'll probably buy a couple of shirts or uh, dresses. But when Future Lifestyle logs on to Coops, they buy 30% stake in the company for about 140 crore rupees. You and I may get, at best, free home delivery. They get two board seats as far as Coops is concerned. Uh, but the larger point, of course, is going forward in retail. It's not only click that will work, it is not only brick and mortar, it is click and mortar because if you take a look at the recent deals, Amazon buying stake in Shopperstop as well as Walmart buying stake in Flipkart, talks about omni-channel. Future, at for 140 crores, they bought 30% of coups. They do have enough strength on their balance sheet. 0.4 times debt to equity is what they have. So analysts believe this is comfortable. Going forward, this is a positive for both of them as the acquisition gives Future Lifestyle uh, the foray into, uh, in, into an online platform via which they can sell more of their products at high realizations because three out of four con consumers of Coops are women. Uh, Jeffrey says this deal is beneficially for, uh, beneficial for both of them. They have a target price of 540 on, uh, on, on, on future retail. And Coops PLC, which is a London, uh, London uh, uh, stock exchange listed stock, was up about 32% yesterday. Okay, you said three out of four consumers are women. I must tell you, one out of the two consumers in the studio are consumers of Coops. I'm a regular one. And you know what? Kishore Biani is in good company, actually. Um, prior to him, uh, the chairman of ASOS, which is also a mega online uh, retail store, he was an investor in Coops. So, I mean, uh, the future looks bright. Very right? educational. Actually, you shouldn't even say one out of two. There's only one out of one consumer. <laughs> two is not a consumer at all. <laughs> all right, okay. uh, Mangalam, thanks a lot for that. And uh, let's do a quick recap then of our top 10 stocks expected to gain today. Reliance Industries, Titan, Sriram Transport, Force Motors, Biocon, M&M, ITC, Darbar and Future Lifestyle. Of course, Reliance Industries is also subject to what comes out of that AGM later in the day. While the lone stock expected to be under pressure from our list is Tata Motors because of the weakness in JLR sales in the US. That but gives the impression it's going to be a bullish day. <laughs> We've got <laughs> 9 out of 10 stocks expected to be in the green. Okay, some more stocks in the news, right, this morning. Uh, Sonal is here as always to tell us about that. Sonal. Good morning, Sonia. I'll start with Soam Distillery. Some good news coming in there. The subsidiary of the company has acquired a brewery in the state of Orissa, and the capacity of that particular brewery is around 42 lakhs, lakh cases per annum. And uh, apart from that, the company also expects additional cost of around 25 to 30 crores to upgrade the uh, plant. And uh, also, the debt in the books of the company currently stands at 40 crore rupees. Uh, FM Industries will also be in focus because the company has signed an agreement for providing technical assistance to two Toyota companies in Japan. That that stock will be in focus as well. And Intellect Design also has entered into a deal with Bankos and Tandor to implement their transaction banking, pay, transaction banking payment services to the company. Back to you. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Uh, we'll put those also on our radar, Sunil. But uh, time for the break. Our technical experts, Ashwini Gujral, Sudarshan Sukhani and Mitesh Thakkar joining in.